my main fields of special, uh, specialization are uh, symbolic interpretation of the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda, the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda contents and chronology, and in the European homeland and migrations. Um, there are some primary uh, preliminary uh, scientific restrictions. The first is that uh, the common in the European um, cultural vocabulary uh, means animal husbandry, agriculture, crafts, uh, wheel transport, and use of copper. Uh, the next uh, preliminary scientific restriction is uh, that the Rig Vedic in the Aryan language cannot be dated to the Hurri antiquity because of the linguistic development stages consideration. Uh, we uh, should look at uh, the uh, chronological stage of uh, Mitanni Aryan language. It is the language of uh, Kingdom of Mitanni, core territory and the greatest uh, extent, uh, extent uh, in circa 15th century BC. So it was recorded between uh, 1600 and 1260 um, BC. And when we uh, study the Mitanni Aryan words, um, we see that uh, they are later than all uh, Vedic words. Uh, because we have uh, consonant um, combinations, uh, which are later in the stage of language uh, linguistic development, uh, comparing with the uh, Rig Vedic, Adharva Vedic, and in general Vedic um, language. For example, we have Subandhu in uh, Mitanni Aryan language, which is Subandhu in the Rig Vedic and Adharva Vedic language. Uh, by the way, uh, the phonetics of uh, the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda is the same. Even uh, of uh, Brahmanas and Aranyakas and Upanishads, uh, the phonetics uh, stays the same. But we don't know when uh, it uh, started to be, um, I mean, the language started to be sacred. And uh, it uh, didn't change uh, when it uh, ceased to be colloquial. We know for sure that the Rig Vedic language and the Adharva Vedic language uh, um, was colloquial. So it was freely spoken. And uh, that's why uh, we uh, may be sure that the phonetics of the uh, Rig Veda and Adharva Veda is uh, earlier than the phonetics of the Mitanni Aryan language. So uh, Dharma in uh, Mitanni Aryan uh, was Dharma in the Rig Veda. Uh, Svaditi in Mitanni Aryan was Svadhiti. So we see uh, that uh, D letter, uh, D sound, uh, stays, uh, stands for Dha uh, combination uh, of consonants in the Rig Vedic language. And the same we have uh, some other examples given here. For example, Abhirata in the Mitanni Aryan uh, was Abhi Radha in the uh, Rig Vedic. Babru was Babhru. So we see the transition from H and H to B and T in the Mitanni Aryan language. Um, uh, Shata uh, was uh, Sapta, seven. So we see the uh, transition from P -t to uh, double T uh, and uh, the following. So all this information uh, taken in general uh, leads uh, us to an inevitable conclusion that uh, Mitanni Aryan language is a uh, post Vedic. So it is uh, the different stage of the linguistic uh, development of the phonetic changes. And that's why, uh, in no way possible, uh, that uh, mit any Mitanni Aryan uh, words uh, are contemporary with any of uh, the words from the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda. Uh, here I uh, may only point at Talagheri's conclusion that the late Rig Veda, so-called late Rig Veda, is contemporary uh, with Mitanni Aryan language. It can't be so because of these uh, phonetic uh, stages uh, differences. Uh, Rig Vedic language and Adharva Vedic language is earlier than uh, Mitanni Aryan language. Uh, I uh, make a, a conclusion that any chronology dating the Rig Veda much before circa 3000 BCE and after circa 2000 BCE is utterly unscientific. Um, I have developed the dating of the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda based on the identification of the realities of material culture and natural objects uh, mentioned in their texts which makes it possible to place them in 
and then archaeologically verifiable temporal and archaeologically verifiable temporal and geographical context. Uh, I have proposed a system of uh, interrelated arguments. Uh, there are about 40 of them, each of which um, confirms all of the others and at the same time is based on the correlation of the text and archaeology. Uh, the first is the argument of the sacred seven. Uh, it, in the Rigveda, it correlates with the ten rare characters of the Matyuk Harappa. Uh, the uh, sacred seven is the uh, core of the symbolic teaching of the Rigveda. Uh, and if uh, we uh, look at Matyuk Harappa items, so we can um, see some. We can find some uh, ten rare characters. Um, on the seals, uh, for example, this one from Harappa, or this one uh, from uh, Mahanjadara. There is one more, but it's not um, demonstrated here. I remember that there were at least three items with uh, uh, septenary sevenfold symbolism uh, in the material Harappa. Uh, then the argument of eight Yonis and uh, sons of Aditi in the Adharva Veda, uh, which correlates uh, it with the uh, seven altars of Matyok, Harappa, and Kalibanga. Uh, why uh, seven and eight? Uh, there were uh, originally eight sons of Aditi, uh, great goddess of the Rig Veda, but uh, only uh, seven of them uh, were of divine origin uh, and they were worshipped. And Martanda, uh, the eighth uh, son was not worshipped. So in uh, the Matyo Harappan Kalibangan, uh, we have this uh, famous uh, photography, um, probably taken uh, by uh, Braj Basilal, late Braj, Bas Braj Basilal, uh, while excavating this um, site, um, which, uh, as uh, he describes it, uh, 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 demonstrates the role of seven altars, uh, and I connect them with this uh, worship of uh, to the seven sons of Aditi. The argument of arable farming in the Rig Veda correlates it with the agricultural communities of pre Harappa and early and mature Harappa of Hindustan. Uh, we know that the earliest agricultural uh, settlements of uh, South Asia uh, were Mergar and Kirana almost contemporary, uh, dating uh, back to uh, the uh, end of uh, the 8,000 uh, uh, um, uh, BC. The argument of agriculture on the Saraswati in the Adharva Veda correlates it and the older Veda with the mature and early Harappa perspective. The point is that um, there is uh, a description of uh, agriculture and uh, abundant uh, agricultural products, uh, even in the very late uh, part of the Adharva Veda, which means that uh, the Saraswati was still uh, flowing uh, while composing this uh, part of the Sanhita. And we also know that the Adharva Veda is at least several centuries uh, later than the Rig Veda. So, uh, if the hydrological catastrophe uh, happened around uh, 1900 BC or so, then the Adharva Veda uh, must be dated uh, prior to uh, this uh, catastrophe, and uh, the Rig Veda uh, must be dated even earlier. So, the Adharva Veda uh, uh, becomes Matyo Harappan, and the Rig Veda respectively uh, um, becomes early Harappan. So this is the uh, famous photo from Kalibangan of uh, the field excavated uh, and uh, uh, Banavali Klaumot also. The argument of the one-horned bull in the Rig Veda uh, correlates it with the most widespread cult of the unicorn of Matyo Harappa. Uh, there are very few mentions of uh, one-horned bulls uh, in, in the Rig Veda, uh, but uh, they are very important because it gives us the connection uh, to the very uh, important cult of Matthew Harappa, that of uh, the uh, unicorn. Uh, as for me, uh, unicorn in the Matthew Harappa was the symbol of power of this civilization in general. Uh, and uh, we know from uh, the Rigveda that um, 
there is uh, a horn of Maruts, uh, who are the brothers uh, and uh, the um, army troops of uh, Indra. And we also know that they uh, make up Indra's power, Indriyam. Uh, so, and they are his Vajra. Uh, we can uh, see uh, this uh, unicorn uh, or one horned bull in the Rigveda as a symbol of Indra's and Marut's power. And uh, it correlates uh, with the uh, very widespread cult of unicorn in the material Harappa, uh, in uh, the seals and figurines. Uh, glaciological argument correlates uh, the main myth of the Rigveda and the Avesta with uh, glacial tra transgressions uh, in uh, dated to uh, 61 double o, uh, to uh, 60 double o and uh, 36 double o to uh, 33 double o BC and successive regressions in Himalayas and Hindu Kush. There were uh, several Indian authors uh, who interpreted the main Rigvedic myth, uh, the myth of uh, the struggle between um, Indra and uh, Vritra and Vala, uh, that is the Ahivritra and the uh, mountain Vala, mountainous Vala, uh, as the um, reflection of the uh, battle between the uh, powers of light and warmth and uh, the uh, glacial phenomena, uh, such as glaciers. Uh, there are two kinds of glaciers. Uh, one is creeping, like snake, snake-like, and the second is uh, uh, mo mountain-like. So the uh, snake-like uh, glacier is the prototype uh, to Britra, uh, and the uh, mountain-like uh, Glacier is the prototype uh, to Val. It was very interesting, but it uh, uh, it uh, wasn't supported by any um, geological data. And I have uh, discovered an article in one Russian uh, professional specialized um, uh, scientific journal, which uh, gives uh, the um, radiocarbon chronology of the soils taken uh, uh, from under the glaciers. Uh, uh, of uh, Tibet and uh, Himalayas. So for the first time in, uh, in scientific uh, uh, history, uh, they, these uh, regressions and uh, transgressions, which uh, means the periods of the growth uh, of uh, glaciers and their melting, they were uh, dated uh, by radiocarbon. If you look at the uh, photos of these uh, glaciers, uh, there are some of them uh, uh, from the bound border region between uh, South Asia and Tehran. You see here uh, several examples of the snake-like uh, glaciers. I suppose they, they were uh, much more numerous uh, several thousand uh, years ago. And uh, the Rigvedic Rishas, uh, they were um, abiding in the ashrams uh, high in the mountains. Uh, because Himalayas are sacred uh, right from the Rigveda and then in the Mahakarata and so on. And uh, they, uh, were, uh, they observed this uh, natural phenomena and used it as the symbol in their description of their uh, teachings. Uh, so uh, these huge uh, snakes uh, uh, devouring life and light and everything and they also make uh, people of the mountainous valleys uh, retreat uh, and um, populate the plains of South Asia, which was uh, like the reason for their migrations from the mountainous valleys. So the Sarasvati's argument uh, correlates the Rigveda and the Atharva Veda with the northwest of Hindustan before uh, 19 below the sea. Uh, this Sarasvati argument is uh, very uh, well developed in the scientific literature, and it is the general uh, opinion, uh, communist opinion, uh, that uh, the hydrological catastrophe uh, became around 1900 BC. And um, what is my contribution to this um, argument? Um, I used uh, the data uh, given by different authors, mostly 
Indian archaeologist, but also Jonathan Mark uh, Kinoya, an American uh, res very respected archaeologist, and so on. So um, we have uh, at least three waves of uh, Aryan dispersal recorded in the Sarasvati Valley. Uh, here you can see the map of the Sarasvati Valley, which is identified as the Hagar Hakra River, and the map drawn by uh, Braj Basilal, late Braj Basilal, uh, which uh, gives us the coincidence uh, the, um, of two maps. So we see that the Rigvedic habitat is the same as the territory of uh, the spread of the Matio Harappan civilization. And then um, there were some other maps uh, by uh, several Indian archaeologists. Uh, and the first wave of Aryan dispersal in the Sarasvati Valley recorded, attested so far, is the Hakra stage, uh, which dates um, to uh, 37 to uh, 28 BCE in the um, Kagar Hakra Valley. But uh, we have uh, even earlier dates uh, from Hirana. Uh, which are still out of uh, the room, they are um, odd one out, so to say, but uh, still we are sure that uh, in the fourth uh, millennium BC, people started inhabiting this uh, territory. And this is a very, very important uh, region of the Sarasvati Valley around Dravar Fort, uh, because here we uh, have uh, uh, just a bunch of settlements and uh, it was uh, in the material Harappan epoch, it was the uh, most important great grain producing region of the uh, whole uh, civilization. So this is uh, the settlements of uh, the Hakra West face in Chalistan around the Ravar Port. Uh, the second wave for Farian dispersal in the Sarasvati Valley was the early Harappa. Uh, it is dated between uh, 33 to 26 BC. And it is um, represented by the settlements of uh, four archaeological cultures, Amrinal, Anarta, Odijan, and Sodhi Sisval. Uh, here uh, in this map, you can see all of them. And um, uh, here is the map of the settlements only of two of them, Amrinal sites and Kodijan sites. And uh, this is uh, uh, Kandijan uh, culture uh, settlements and Sothi Sisval uh, culture uh, settlements. Sothi Sisval culture um, settlements um, are located, are situated in the upper reaches of uh, Rishadvati and uh, Saraswati uh, and near to Yamuna River. Uh, so, and this is the Deravar Fort uh, settlements during the early Harappan phase in Chalistan. And the third and last way for foreign dispersal in the Sar Sarasvati Valley to me is the early uh, Matthew Harappan stage, uh, the very beginning of the Matthew Harappan civilization, uh, when the culture spread quickly and most probably with uh, uh, military conflicts uh, through the whole uh, valley of, uh, Indus, uh, of the Indus and Sarasvati. Uh, we see uh, very many uh, settlements here. And this is the uh, map of uh, the Matthew Harappan phase uh, settlements in Cholista. So when we compare uh, this uh, last uh, map, the third and last wave of foreign dispersal in the Saraswati Valley of the early Matthew Harappan stage, and uh, the uh, settlements of uh, late Harappan stage, uh, we uh, know for sure that uh, there was a hydrological catastrophe and uh, the huge mass of people moved from the Sarasvati Valley uh, to the upper reaches of this river and uh, to Gujarat and to the jungles of the um, Yamuna and Ganga Dua. So Aryans evacuated the Sarasvati Valley because of this hydrological catastrophe. And here you can see what happened in the... Um, uh, Ch uh, Chalistan region uh, around Dravar port that it was abandoned. And also this is the um, table of uh, Mughal. Uh, it gives us the total number of the sites of the settlements of different stages. And uh, here we can see that uh, uh, there was a drastic uh, decrease of the settlements uh, between the material Harappan stage and um, uh, cemetery age or late Harappan stage. 
not only in the uh, site counts, but also in the uh, area of the satellites. So, uh, judging uh, all this information, I uh, come to the conclusion, and uh, this is my particular contribution to this Sarasati argument, that both the Rig Veda and the Atharva Veda could have been composed uh, in the uh, Sarasati Valley only before 1900 BC. But we know from the linguistic um, data, the Adhar, and also from the study of uh, the mythology and religion of the Adhar Veda, which, which is definitely later than that of the Rig Veda, uh, that the Adhar Veda is at least several centuries later than the Rig Veda. So the Rig Veda might have been comp composed in the Hakra period or in the early Harappan period. Then that Harva Veda might have been composed uh, in the mature Harappan period or in the or in the early Harappan period. The next argument is the absence of tiger mentions in the Rig Veda, along with the development of the tiger cult in the Adharva Veda, replacing the Rig Vedic wine cult, um, indicate uh, the need to date the Rig Veda prior to the mature Harappan era, with its widespread tiger cult connected with royal consecration and um, with the king. Uh, that is before 2600 BC. And these are some examples of the, uh, the expression of this tiger cult of Mathieu Harappa. Accordingly, the Adharva Veda should date to the time of Mathieu Harappa, that is 2600 to 1900 BC. The argument of the separation of the two tigers, that is Agni Shiva and Agni Kravyad in the Adharva Veda, correlates it with the Mathieu Harappa also. Uh, and these are the illustrations of these uh, two tigers and their separation. The composite, uh, composite bovine images uh, of the Adharva Veda correlated with the chimeras of Mathieu Harappa. And these are some of the chimeras of Mathieu Harappa. Um, the description of sea ships, shells, and pearls, and oceanic trade in the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda date them to uh, 3000 uh, to 1900 BC. These are the um, depictions of uh, some ships of Mathieu Harappa. And these are different uh, shells, uh, molluscans, and uh, different uh, uh, shell items of Mathieu Harappa. Uh, this is uh, the uh, picture of shell species and, and derived artifacts of the Mathieu Harappa and uh, the illustration of the label manufacture uh, out of the shell. Uh, next, uh, shell ladles of Mathieu Harappa and some uh, shell bangles also, and also bangle manufacture illustration. And these are the mollusks of uh, Holovira site of Mathieu Harappa. The argument of a man with a baby in his hands in the late hymns of the Rig Veda correlates it with the early Mathieu Harappa. That is uh, 2600 to 2500 BC. And this is a unique figuring uh, evidence in this uh, Rig Vedic passage. The argument of the books as a symbol of power in the Rig Veda relates it with the corresponding symbol of early and mature Harappa. Um, these are some illustrations. Um, the one one is, uh, according to me, uh, the palace uh, with two wheel signs and uh, uh, three um, less ones are the depictions of unicorn, uh, widespread uh, civilization symbol uh, of power of mature Harappa. And also we see uh, a repeating uh, sign, uh, will of power in a fortified fortress, a fortified settlement. Uh, compare it uh, with um, early Egyptian um, depictions of fortified settlements. The same principle is uh, evident. And uh, some more material Harappan uh, seals with the uh, this uh, will uh, of power sign. Usually it is depicted with animals embodying a strength and power. The argument of the buffalo in the Rig Veda relates it with the most important cult of early and mature Harappa. 
these are the uh, early Harappan uh, examples of the expression of this cult. And these are uh, some of uh, material Harappan uh, items expressing this uh, cult. And uh, more. The argument of the buffalo fight in the late hymn of the Rigveda correlates it with the scenes of the buffalo killing of Matteo Harappa. It is a direct parallel to one late Rigvedic hymn. Uh, so we see here a spear, a spearman uh, killing a buffalo with a spear with uh, probably a metal point, which is mentioned in the Rigveda. The argument of the cult of elephant in the Adharva Veda relates it with the widespread elephant cult of Mutio Harappa. And by the way, elephant in the Adharva Veda becomes the uh, animal of Indra, riding animal of Indra. So uh, these are some of the Mutio Harappa seals with uh, elephant. The argument of the cult of Pashupati in the Rig Veda relates it with the cults of the master of animals and the horned archer god of Matthew Harappa. They are connected uh, because uh, Pashupati is uh, a name of Agni and uh, his, um, his aspects like uh, Pushan and other, others. And uh, Indra, uh, one of uh, Agni's aspects in the Rig Veda is also described as a great archer, the same as uh, Rudra and uh, some other gods. Matthew Harappan um, copper uh, plates with the depiction of the archer, uh, font archer god. And one more uh, illustration of the Matthew Harappan master of animals. The image of the two winged bulls and the tree in the Rig Veda, most probably the Ashwins, is the uh, prototype of the seal of Matthew Harappan. The image of the two twin bulls in the Rig Veda in general correlates it with the late early and mature Harappa, where we can find the uh, depictions of these two twin bulls, uh, inseparable bulls. Matthew Harappa, uh, Balochistan. The argument of a cow bound to a tree with some birds around them uh, in the late hymn of the Rig Veda correlates it with the Indus Valley uh, of uh, early mature or mature Harappa with uh, one uh, important cow to do translation. This is uh, this uh, ornament belt, uh, also from Balochistan, this uh, a later picture. The arguments of forests and the cult of trees in the Rig Veda correlated with the forests of Hindustan and the cult of sacred trees of Matthew Harappa. Uh, these are uh, some illustrations of um, a tree deity. Uh, in the Rig Veda, we have uh, Aranyani, for example, um, a forest deity, but also uh, we uh, see here um, uh, Mundigak vessel uh, with this uh, Ashwatha uh, depiction. Uh, it is from Afghanistan. And a uh, great many um, uh, clay uh, items with the depiction of these uh, holy trees uh, grown deliberately from Harappa, Kalibangan. Uh, and we also see uh, the common uh, patterns of Pipal uh, tree in Balochistan archaeology and also Kech Makran uh, coast of uh, the Indian Ocean. And more uh, are the trees. The argument of fortresses in the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda correlate them with the fortified uh, settlements of early, mature, uh, early and mature Harap respectively. Uh, Rehman Heri fortress uh, built uh, around 33 uh, Double OBC is so far that we have Kadiji fortified settlement uh, and uh, Kalibangan uh, one uh, early Harappan settlement. And then um, we have Matthew Harappan uh, fortified settlements, Kalibangan and uh, some others, Banavali, Harappa, Mahenjadara, Tulavira, Kuntasi, Makhal, Turkatada, all of Matthew Harappan time. Uh, so this is the structural history of uh, Banavali. Um, this is the structural history of Sarkatada. 
Well, this is Mahenjadar illustration uh, reconstructions, uh, Halavira reconstruction, and uh, structural uh, phases of Halavira fortified settlement. Harappa uh, main entr uh, entrance gates and Harappan uh, citadel and Lathal with its peripheral uh, wall. So uh, the uh, Rigvedic mentions uh, references to fortresses uh, sieged or destroyed date them to 33 to 27 BC. The Rigvedic hymns with the descriptions of fortresses attacked, demolished, um, I'm sorry, uh, I, I, I've made a mistake. Uh, the peaceful descriptions of uh, the Rigvedic fortresses uh, no, uh, not being sieged or destroyed, date them to 33 to 27 BC. But the Rigvedic hymns with the descriptions of fortresses attacked, demolished, and burnt date uh, them to 27 to 26 BC because we have a unique archaeological um, chain of events. Uh, the, uh, evidence of uh, attacking, uh, destruction, and burning down some of the fortified settlements uh, during the transition uh, uh, era between Meteor Harappa and uh, uh, between early uh, Harappa and Meteor Harappa. This is the unique uh, historic uh, period uh, in the archaeological history of the fortified uh, settlements of South Asia. The Adharva Veda was create, created mostly in the Meteor Harappa epoch, and reflected the flourishing town culture of the Matthew Harappa. The argument of the absence of a sword in the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda does not allow uh, us to date the composition in South Asia later than circa 2000 BC. And uh, here we have the earliest, uh, so far earliest, uh, uh, Matthew, late Matthew Harappa uh, swords from Mahanjadara and uh, antenna hilted swords uh, from uh, Sanoli Cemetery. Uh, late uh, Harappan and uh, Port, uh, Cemetery and uh, the Cemetery of uh, the Culture of Copper Hoods and Oak uh, Colored Pottery. Here they are and both. The arguments of the developed cult of Mother and Yoni and uh, the emerging cult of Lingam in the Rig Veda and the Adharva Veda correlate them with the agricultural and fertility cults of Mother, Yoni, and Lingam in pre Harappa, early, and mature Harappa. Here are uh, some uh, uh, mother goddess uh, figurines from Mergarh and from Balochistan, and then uh, some bronze figurines of mature Harappa and clay figurines of Matthew Harappa. And we also have Rakhigarhi Yonipitha, and uh, we have uh, Lingam from uh, Mahenjadara and Kali Bangan Yonilingam of Matthew Harappa, and uh, we also have a modern uh, photo of Yonipitha, so they're very similar. And Kali Bangan Lingam photo of Matthew Harappa. Uh, the Rigveda, is the foundation text of Shaivism, Tantra, and Shaktism, uh, and it contains undoubtful evidence of Agni Shiva and Agni Rudra uh, and Mother uh, or and Mother Shakti worship in the images of uh, still unnamed, uh, yet unnamed, uh, Jyotir Lingam and Dhyan. Uh, Shaivism, Tantra, and Shaktism are not foreign to the Rigvedic Indarian culture and are not borrowed from any other culture. Shaivism, Tantra, and Shaktism are not of non-Aryan, uh, Dravidian, or else origin. Shaivism, Tantra, and Shaktism are of Aryan origin. Uh, Shaivism, Tantra, and Shaktism, with their such popular elements as buffalo worship, zebu worship, gaur worship, gavaya worship, ashvatha worship, mass bloody cattle sacrifices, polyandry, or geastic fertility cults are Rigvedic in the Aryan cult. The argument of uh, Radha, a wheeled vehicle in the Rigveda, correlates it with the wheeled transport of early and mature Harappa. Here we have many uh, models of mature Harappa uh, cuts and uh, wheeled vehicles, clay and uh, bronze, and also some inscriptions of mature Harappa of the same. The argument of the cult of Zibu in the Rig Veda correlates it with the realities and cults of pre-Harappa, early, and mature Harappa. 
uh, Balochistan uh, found bull types, uh, uh, material harapan uh, seals with zebu, and one of great many uh, zebu figurines, clay figurines of material harapan. The argument of the hoofed endemics of Hindustan, Buffalo, Gaur, Zibu, Gavaya, in the Rigveda, correlates it with South Asia of pre Harappa, early and Matyo Harappa. And here we have three uh, species, uh, bovine species uh, depicted Zibu bull, Buffalo, and Gaur. Uh, the arguments of inhumation and cremation in the Rigveda and the Adharva Veda correlate them with the realities of Matyo Harappa. Uh, here we have uh, the burials, um, inhumation burials um, of the Matyo Harappa from different sites uh, because uh, the cremation uh, is not so easily attested archaeologically, as well as uh, the other uh, modes of burial. So the names of the cremation fire, Kravyat and Kravyavahana, appear in the late kings of the Rigveda. And the symbolic creation of Mergar with the use of polka and goats becomes real in the late hymn of the Rigveda and in the Adharva Veda, where uh, this, the goat uh, is used to take off the excessive heat of Agni. And this is, uh, these are two um, examples of uh, burials, uh, inhumation burials uh, with the using of uh, goats from Mergar. Uh, around uh, the end of the seventh uh, millennium BC. Uh, the Adharva Veda mentions the uh, inhumation, probably in a voodoo coffin, with a number of pots, uh, the cremation, and the exposition of dead body. The argument of Ashva in the Rig Veda makes the horse argument irrelevant and allows us to date the Rig Veda before approximately 2000 BCE. And uh, here I will give uh, the animals which are, are or can be called Ashva in the Rig Veda. Uh, they are equids uh, of South Asia endemic, mm, endemics, uh, Equus kianf and uh, Equus uh, himeonus khur, uh, Chital deer, Axis axis, Prashad uh, Ashva uh, of uh, Maruts, uh, Antelope, mm, also um, Ashva of Maruts, uh, two um, goat species, uh, Adjashwa of Kushan, um, horned uh, deer, uh, Sambar, uh, a riding deer of Indra in the first mandala of the Rig Veda, and uh, Bostaurus indicus, uh, Zibu bull, uh, the uh, drawing animal of uh, Ashwins, uh, Ushas, uh, Indra, and in general uh, of the Rig Veda. Uh, and some uh, several species of eagles, uh, Gridhra or uh, Shiena, uh, Vaya Ashvach in the Rig Veda. And even lion, Haryashva. Uh, Haryashva uh, means uh, a swift uh, creature uh, of lion hue, of lion skin, skin color. Agni flames are also numerously called Ashvas. Uh, Suryas and Ushasa um, uh, beams uh, rays are also called Ashvas. And even uh, winds uh, are called Ashvas in the Rig Veda. So the conclusion is that the Rig Vedic Ashva means any swift creature of force, not necessarily a true force, Equus ferus cabalus. The argument of the cult of the humpback water cattle in the Rig Veda correlates it with the pre Harappa, early and mature Harappa. Uh, here are the examples. Uh, the lower uh, row, we have uh, two earliest examples. And then we have uh, the upper uh, row. It is uh, early mature uh, and uh, also no Sharon. And uh, this is from Balochistan also. The most prominent expressions of this cult of the watery hump bull and cattle in general. The argument of the solar bull cult in the Rig Veda and the Avesta correlates them with early and mature Harappa. These are the example of the illustration from Balochistan. Uh, the argument of bull chariots in the Rig Veda correlates it uh, with early and mature Harappa. Here we have the reconstructions of the mature Harappa uh, bull uh, vehicles and also some rock uh, pictures from central India of bull chariots. 
and the famous Daimabad uh, bull chariot um, of Indra, as, uh, as, as per my uh, interpretation of this uh, figurine. The argument of the cult of the three headed bull in the Rig Veda correlates it with the cult of material Kharab. Three headed bull uh, on the seals of material Kharab. The argument of the naked uh, mother goddess riding on bulls uh, or humpback bulls in the Rig Veda correlates it with a similar cult of the goddess in the Indus Valley of the 3000 BC. Here we have Balochistan uh, clay uh, composition and um, uh, a later, uh, the beginning of the second uh, millennium BC, uh, bronze composition from uh, northern India. The argument of earthquakes in the Rig Veda correlates it with the natural and cultural realities of early and medieval Harappa. Uh, the decreasing number of earthquakes mentions in the later Rig Vedic dunes proves the Rig Vedic in the Aryans movement from the mountainous valleys uh, onto the plains. Archaeologically uh, recorded earth earthquake uh, in early Harappa and Kalibangana upon Saraswati fortified settlement in the core of Rig Vedic habitat dates the Rig Veda once more uh, around 27 uh, BC. And these are the photos of uh, the faulted strata and um, of the layers of bricks uh, evidencing the uh, earthquake of Kalabanga. Uh, based on the system of the listed arguments, I date the Rig Veda uh, to uh, 33 to uh, 26 BC and the Akharva Veda to 26.00 to 19.00 BC. That is, the Rig Veda is early Harappan and the Adharva Veda is a material Harappan. Uh, I have discovered a system of cultural markers uh, enabling to trace the dispersal of populations with the Rig Vedic culture from the Indus Valley. They are the spread of the Soma as a bird of prey in the vessel pattern from South Asia uh, marks the migration of the population with the Rig Vedic culture. This is the uh, map of the spread of this pattern drawn by me. So you can see uh, it appears in uh, South Asia in the Rig Veda, and then it spreads uh, west to Iran, then uh, to central Iran, to western Iran, then to Bakhte Margiana territory, then to the Marlik territory, uh, to the south of the Caspian Sea, and then to uh, Asia Minor, to the Hittite Kingdom. Uh, and these are the uh, pictures of this. Uh, the upper register is uh, the gold uh, ritual vessel from Bactria Margiana. Then we have a bronze vessel uh, from uh, Jerov. Then we have um, three gold vessels uh, from Marlik culture and uh, a clay vessel, ritual vessel uh, of the Hittites. So the spread of the watery hunt cattle pattern from South Asia also marks the migration of the population with the regulated culture. And this is uh, the map of the spread of this pattern drawn by me also. So it starts from uh, the uh, Balochistan and Pakistan and moves on to um, Jerov uh, civilization territory of uh, central and uh, uh, eastern Iran. Uh, then to uh, Bactria Margiana in southern Afghanistan, uh, then to the northern Afghanistan, then to Elam territory, then to the Malik territory, to the south of the Caspian Sea, and then to the Hittite Empire territory. And these are the photos of some of the examples of this cult. Um, the first is a silver vessel from Afghanistan. Then we have in the upper register the gold uh, ritual vessel from Bactria Margiana. Then we have uh, um, in the low register um, um, stone carved vessel from Jerov civilization and the two photos of uh, hunt uh, bull uh, vessels, uh, ritual vessels, uh, burial vessels from the Marlik cemetery. And the last is the silver return uh, of the Hittite empire. Uh, the distribution of the naked or uh, getting naked uh, beauty riding uh, bulls or uh, Pumped uh, bulls or bull uh, pattern of the Rig Veda in the cultures of the ancient East marks the migration of Aryans, Nisita Luvans, and Greeks from the northwestern Hindustan up to continental Greece. 
And this is a map drawn by me of the distribution of this pattern. So it again starts from uh, the South Asia, then moves uh, uh, to Gerald civilization territory, then to Syria and Northern Mesopotamia, and then to the Hittite territory. Uh, and this is, uh, these are the illustrations. Uh, so we start from Balochistan and Northern India. Then we have two um, seals of Jerov and Kerman uh, territories of Iran. And then we have uh, many depictions of these uh, getting made uh, goddess beauty riding on a humped bull uh, from Syria uh, and Mitanni territory. And the last one in the corner, round uh, seal uh, of the early Hittite uh, kingdom. We also have this goddess uh, standing on a humped uh, uh, bull. And then we have um, black figure vessels of uh, the uh, archaic and classical Greece, but uh, the bull is humpless already, but the pattern is the same. And also one red uh, figure vessel from the Southern Italy Greek state, and also four coins, uh, Three of them are silver and one is bronze uh, with the depiction of this uh, very same cult. Uh, the spread of the Pika Griffin or Griffin man image from the Indus Valley marks the migration of the population with the elements of uh, the Rigvedic culture to Syria, Cyprus and Greece. Again, a map uh, of the spread of this uh, pattern drawn by me. It starts from uh, the Sindhu Valley in the Indus Valley and moves on to Mitanni territory of Syria and Northern Mesopotamia to Cyprus and to uh, Mycenaean Greek states. Uh, so the uh, Griffin, Griffin uh, image is uh, attested as early as the uh, uh, around approximately 3000 BC in the now culture of Balochistan. But we have uh, in Chanhudara, a pottery shed from Chanhudara, we have a very depiction of this uh, griffin, uh, uh, Pico griffin. And compare uh, this depiction to the depictions uh, of, uh, from the same Chanhudara of peacocks, and also run for peacocks. So, and we have many seals with the depiction of the uh, Peacock griffin or griffin man, uh, one headed and two headed from uh, the um, Mitanni territory, co territory uh, that is Syria and northern Mesopotamia, and also Cyprus. And then uh, just two examples of uh, the Greek. Uh, uh, it is a seal and uh, a jewelry uh, from uh, the middle of the second uh, millennium BC, Mycenaean Greeks. So I have discovered material traces evidence in the general migration of the Indo-Europeans from Iran, Hindustan, Bactria, Margiana border region to Europe. That is the spread of the bull games, uh, which marks the dispersal of the Indo-European tribes from South Asia to Iran, Bactria, Margiana, Syria, Anatolia, and Greece. This is the uh, map of the dis distribution of the bull games uh, drawn by me. So it starts again from the uh, element of Harappan, then uh, to Jerov civilization ter territory of Iran, then to Bactria Margiana, then to uh, Syria and northern Mesopotamia, from there to Egypt, Hyksos dynasty, uh, to Mycenaean and Minoan Greeks, and uh, to the Hittite kingdom. Uh, these are uh, Matthew and early Matthew Hrappen depiction of the depictions of these uh, ball games. And uh, in, uh, in the corner, you can see uh, a fragment of a Bactria Margiana depiction of these games. Then we have Gerov depiction. Then we have uh, the earliest Greek depiction, clay uh, vessel ritual. Then we have Syria seal, uh, Syrian seal, and uh, two depictions of the Hittite, uh, early Hittite um, vessel with this uh, Bulgarian uh, molding. Then we have Syria, again, seals, cylinder seals, and more. And uh, two uh, gold uh, fingerings of the Mycenaean Greeks. And the famous uh, fresco wall painting uh, from the Knossos Palace uh, of the uh, uh, Greeks of the uh, middle of the second uh, millennium BC. 
And uh, here we have uh, the pictures of the living remnants of this bull taming game in South uh, India, the uh, Jelikatu festival. They are very expressive and very similar to the early Harappan description of this uh, game. Uh, the spread uh, of uh, the uh, archer with the trident pattern from Matteo Harappa to Greece as the archer god and the trident god through the bifurcation of the image in Syria and Anatolia marks the dispersal of the Indo-European tribes with the Rigvedic culture elements. So these are uh, Matteo Harappa seals. We have uh, several depictions of uh, an archer with a bow and an arrow uh, holding a uh, or standing next to um, a trident, or uh, a depiction of an arrow and um, a bow uh, in one um, row with a trident sign. Then we have Syria, uh, the uh, god standing on a horn deer, like the Rigvedic uh, Indra of the first mandala. And uh, it has uh, both uh, attributes, uh, the bow and uh, the trident. Uh, but then uh, the bifurcation happened, and we have the depiction of the Trident God, short Trident God, of the Hittite mythology and Luvian mythology of Indo Europeans, and uh, at the same time of the Archer God, standing on a horned deer, of these very same uh, cultures, Hittite, uh, Nisita Luvian. And then uh, this uh, mythology uh, is uh, evidenced by the uh, black figure vessels of uh, archaic and uh, early classical Greek uh, culture. It is a Poseidon god with the trident, uh, silver uh, coins with the same god, and red figure vessels. Uh, and pay attention that uh, Poseidon's uh, son, uh, a triton is an uh, exact equivalent to the Rigvedic Trita Aptia, that is uh, the third uh, watery. Uh, and he is depicted uh, in the Greek uh, mythology as having a snake like uh, body, a sea snake. Uh, and Poseidon's uh, habitat, Achianos, is the Rigvedic. Uh, uh, Vritra uh, Ashayanas, that is mean, uh, which means uh, uh, Vritra lion in the mountains across the rivers. And uh, he's depicted, Achayanas is depicted as uh, having a unicorn horn of the Harappan unicorn, and also as having a snake uh, like body of a sea snake. And uh, he uh, holds uh, a, a snake, a cobra. And uh, Achianus' uh, son, uh, Achilles, uh, is also depicted as having a sea snake uh, like uh, body and uh, a horn of a unicorn. So, and the second uh, god, Archer god, is the Polo, uh, depicted in, on different vessels a black figure and red figure, and on coins and in figurines. And uh, Apollo's enemy, by the way, Apollo is the exact uh, equivalent to the Rigetic program, Archer. And uh, his uh, enemy, Python, is the Ahi Budhnya of the Rigveda, uh, the uh, snake of the depths. And they are both depicted in many uh, silver Greek coins. So the spread of the Zibu and Zibu depictions marks the dispersal of the Indo European tribes from South Asia to Iran, Afghanistan, Batria, Margiana, Mesopotamia, Syria, Israel, uh, Palestine, and Anatolia. These are the uh, illustrations. The three first in the, in the upper row is, uh, are from uh, Gerovt. Uh, the, the last one in the corner is the seal from Bactria Margiana. Then we have a series of uh, Zibu depictions from Mitanni State and Syria and Northern Mesopotamia. In the uh, lower row, we have Egyptian reliefs of sea peoples, in the European sea peoples invading Egypt, uh, riding uh, hunt bulls uh, chariots. Uh, fighting from them, and two bronze uh, hand boot uh, figurines from Israel. And then we have three Egyptian uh, temple reliefs depicting uh, hand bulls uh, as uh, drawing uh, Hittite uh, cards uh, in the Hittite military camp uh, at the Battle of Kadesh. So Hittites also used them. And uh, many uh, royal Hittite uh, uh, seals with the depiction of uh, Zibu 
And also Zibu Sain was part of one of the Hittite king, meaning strength. And uh, two uh, a, a seal uh, of Zibu uh, yoked uh, in a plow and uh, also depiction of Zibu from a Kassid Babylonia. Kassids also uh, had some uh, Aryan elements on them. The spread of the Harappan Sonoli type of the shield marks the migration of the Indo-European warrior clans from South Asia to Iran, Syria, Anatolia, Thrace, Greece, Italy, and Gaul. So this is the map of the archaeologically, artistically, and numismatically attested spread of the Harappan Sonoli type of the shield among the Indo-Europeans, uh, drawn by me. And uh, these are the earliest examples, uh, mature Harappan and Chukar, a face of uh, Chanhudara, late Harappan, and also Mahenjadara, Harappa, and again Mahenjadara, pottery sheds. Uh, then we have Sanuli symbolic uh, shields and compare them to the Megiddo ivory uh, table, uh, game table uh, of the very same form, but several centuries later, 13th century BC, Israel. And uh, photos of the real uh, Sonoli type shield from the Sonoli Cemetery. And uh, then we have Mycenaean figure of eight shields uh, derived from them. Uh, Hittite uh, side scoop shields uh, depicted uh, by different uh, reliefs and seals. Early Greek geometric epoch and arch archaic Greek black figure pottery. Uh, and then red figure pottery, many great mythological uh, heroes using this shield. Also pay attention to the uh, scales on the uh, shield, uh, the same as uh, on Sonoli shields. Uh, then we have uh, even the uh, founders of uh, um, the Romans, uh, Aeneas, uh, fleeing from Troy, uh, carrying his father and holding this kind of shield. Uh, Athena and uh, some other Greek goddess using this shield. And uh, Persian bodyguards of Darius the First, one of the founders of the Persian Empire, uh, from uh, reliefs from Persepolis, uh, palace of Darius the First. Then Greek uh, city-states coins with the depiction of this uh, shield. Two uh, South Italian uh, Greek uh, cities vase depicting Thracians uh, with uh, this kind of shield. Uh, gold coin of Philip II, uh, the father of Alexander the Great, uh, using this shield on his coins, um, and one more, and uh, the coin of Alexander the Great himself. Then several coins of Julius Caesar, um, depicting the uh, sacred shield of Rome, the custodian of Rome, and also the shield of the Juno goddess of Rome. And then uh, several coins, uh, gold and silver coins of uh, Caesar's general, uh, Brutus, uh, and two uh, Celtic coins. Uh, they are all depicting uh, the Celtic or Thracian uh, Sonoli, uh, Matthew Harappan Sonoli kind of shit. So I have developed a new definition uh, of the chariot and uh, the new definition of the stand chariot burial. And uh, the earliest so far archaeologically uh, detected uh, standard chariot burials uh, have been discovered in Sonoli. I have revealed the pseudo scientific nature of the chariot myth of, of the archaeology of the Sintashta, Petrovka, Andronova, Alaku, of the Bronze Age of the Steppes and Forest Steppes of Eurasia. Uh, that is the putative Aryan homeland of the Aryan invasion theory. No one chariot of the Bronze Age uh, has so far been found in the steppes and forest steppes of Eurasia. There were no chariot troops of the mythical Aryans of Ota Aryans invading Bactria Margiana, Iran, Afghanistan, and South Asia from the north. And these are two maps illustrating these uh, conclusions of mine. The uh, Middle uh, Bronze Age and the Late uh, Bronze Age. No chariots in the steppes, but there are chariots, bull chariots, and just chariots uh, in Iran uh, and uh, South Asia at the very same time. So I uh, have um, uh, discovered the evidence to trace the origin of the Gallic warrior goddess armed with a man hilted sword from the Rigvedi Kushas Aditi and the antenna hilted swords of the copper pots and ochre pottery culture of South Asia. 
The Rigvedic features of the Golic warrior goddess are first, nudity with breast demonstration in both cultures, connection with Ashvas after the identification of the goddess with the Maya in the Rigveda. These are the gold coins illustrating these conclusions. Uh, connection with cows and bulls up to the identification of the goddess with the cow in both cultures. Uh, association with the sun. In the Rigveda, Ushas is Surya's mistress and leads Surya. Uh, and uh, pay attention to solar symbols on Celtic coins. These are the illustrations. Uh, connection with the wheel in both cultures. Connection with chariots in both cultures. The illustrations. These are all Gallic coins from uh, of the approximately first century BC. Uh, patronage of all living things and life. Ushas is the source of life of everything and uh, life itself. Gives new life and prolongs it. Uh, on Celtic so uh, coins, uh, the goddess holds a branch with leaves or fruits in her hand. The illustrations. Militancy. Uh, uh, Ushas fights uh, against darkness in the Rigveda, and on Celtic coins is the goddess. Musicality. Ushas, plural, the same. A stringed musical instrument is depicted, uh, depicted on Celtic coins. And so pay attention to this uh, man hilted sword of the goddess depicted on the coins. And here we have the um, earliest prototype of this uh, man hilted sword. Uh, they, these are Sanoli, Sanoli uh, antenna. Uh, hilted swords. And then we have uh, the uh, bronze swords of uh, approximately 10 to 800 BC uh, of Central Europe, uh, Urnfield culture, uh, pre Celtic culture, great many of them. The uh, antennas uh, became a spiral, but not always. Sometimes they just have uh, the uh, antenna hilts. And then uh, the evolution comes, and we have uh, the earliest uh, Celtic uh, daggers looking like a man, especially in the third century, man hilted sword. So that uh, were my uh, conclusions, and I thank you for your attention. Why are we still using terms like Aryan? for Rigvedic people when there is no basis for its use in Vedic texts. And since it is proven to have developed in Europe and applied erroneously in racial terms to the Indian subcontinent, could there be a better way to identify them? This is the question by Reshma ji. Very interesting question. I thank you for the question, but uh, the question is unscientific. Uh, it means uh, the person who asks it uh, doesn't know the facts, the linguistic facts and the historic facts uh, of the ancient world. Because the term Arya is not only used in the Rig Veda and the Vedic texts, but also in some uh, Indo-European cultures like German culture or Celtic culture, and even in the Greek culture. For example, the term aristocracy, aristocrat, comes from Arya, uh, from the Indo-European term. Uh, uh, while uh, in the Europeans uh, were still united or closely connected, uh, uh, they had this Aryan um, ideology, the ideology of the warrior class, the ar ideology of the noble people. So they were called Aryans. Uh, so Aryans are in the Rig Veda, Aryans are in the Atharva Veda, and Aryans are in um, just um, five or six in the European cultures of the ancient world. Uh, thank you very much for your very interesting, thought-provoking presentation. Uh, the first thing that struck me was the absence of any mention to the Yamnaya culture, which, as per current uh, views, seems to have spread Indo-European languages into Europe. So where does that feature in the story? Because everything that you show is south of the Caspian Sea. All the migrations that you show are south of the Caspian Sea. So where does the Yamnaya culture and its uh, uh, you know, replacement of U old European populations figure in the scheme of things? Uh, thank you for your question. Firstly, an introductory remark that I'm just one man. <coughs> I can't uh, embrace everything in my life. Uh, yes, I have been studying this question some 10 years ago. And in... Um, 
2015, we had a huge discussion, public online discussion. Um, I was opposed by um, six uh, leading uh, invasionists of Russian Federation and Kazakhstan. Uh, they were Balanovsky, uh, Oleg, and uh, Yelena, two famous, uh, world famous genetics uh, and geneticists, and uh, Leo Klein, professor of archaeology, Yaroslav Veselkov, uh, professor of theology, the translator of Mahabharata, and um, some others. So uh, they asked the same question, but there's no connection of Yamna culture, of Yamna. Um, family of cultures, so to say, of the early Bronze uh, Age uh, to uh, the uh, Iran and uh, uh, to, to Iran and South Asia uh, in the Europeans uh, at all. Because uh, there, is, uh, there are no traces of migration, of uh, southwards migration of Yamna population and Yamna derived population to Iran and South Asia. On the contrary, we have uh, a very early Neolithic and even Mesolithic uh, and early um, uh, early Bronze Age migrations uh, starting from around and uh, southern uh, Middle Asia uh, from the Caspian uh, Sea region uh, to uh, Europe. Uh, for example, the uh, Hollands culture or the uh, Middle Volga is definitely uh, derived from the Shabir cult, archaeological culture of the um, East Caspian uh, coast. Uh, so we have uh, several uh, traces of um, migration of technologies, of um, uh, productive economy, uh, even of uh, pottery making from the south, from Iran and uh, South Asia, I mean, uh, Bactria Margiana territory, uh, not the Bactria Margiana itself. Uh, there was no uh, yet Bactria Margiana, but before that, uh, to the north. And after that discussion, one of the opponents, um, Kozinsev, an, an anthropologist uh, from St. Petersburg, doctor of anthropology, he has changed his views and he uh, even, uh, published a long article in the famous Indo-European journal, uh, speaking the same uh, about the uh, north, uh, what's migration from Iran uh, of the Proto-Indo-Europeans, uh, who became uh, eventually not only Yamna terriers, but um, some other cultures of uh, the Bronze uh, Age of Eurasia and Europe in general. But uh, maybe I will return to this question later in my life. I don't know. Uh, so you, uh, in your presentation, you said that the Rigveda mm -hmm. uh, is sort of single book, but uh, uh, but of course you you would be knowing that the philologists have said that there are there are layers to this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's okay. an old Rigveda which consists of certain mandalas and a new Rigveda mm -hmm. which consists of certain mm -hmm. mandalas. So are you are we able to see that kind of distinction between the old and the new Rigveda in the archaeological record? Oh. Uh, yes, I see what you mean. Uh, it is a very long uh, story of uh, the Rigveda uh, studies um, starting uh, from the 19th century. Uh, yes, there is the um, distinction. The most important distinction is uh, between the uh, uh, 10th mandala and the other mandalas of the Rigveda. Uh, yes, uh, European uh, Vedicists uh, divide Rigveda into several layers. The earliest are the family books, uh, and uh, the position of the ninth mandala is not certain. Uh, some people uh, state that it is the earliest of them, uh, and uh, some think that it is contemporary to the family mandalas. Then we have uh, the still early uh, eight mandala, uh, mandala eight, and then uh, the um, later first mandala, and the last is, is the tenth mandala. I know about Talagheri's uh, in, in the chronology, but in fact, um, because, um, I think that one point is. Uh, missing from uh, both his and uh, their uh, works. Uh, that is the problem of the unity of the Rigveda uh, structure. Um, it was uh, firstly noticed by Max Müller and then by, by uh, some other Rigvedologists. Uh,
my scientific guru Shriarandina. And uh, he states, and I agree with him totally, that Rigveda is one in all, in all of its parts because it has the uh, common ideology, the common phrases, the common um, images, the common inner uh, secret language. So Rigveda, of course, is made up of many different chronological, chronologically different hymns, but it was composed uh, deliberately as a, a united text. And it was made so uh, to be uh, disappeared by the future generations of the riches or, or, or the seekers. So we can't um, exaggerate the inner differences uh, in the Rig Veda. Of course, uh, there are some differences and they are important, uh, but uh, not uh, so as to uh, place them to different archeological atheistic periods. The archaeology of South Asia is not uh, as well developed uh, to differentiate uh, the Rigveda periods uh, according to the archaeological data yet. It is uh, a pity, but it is so. It is a fact uh, for the time being. Maybe the future generations of the scholars will do this, but not, not us, not us, not Talagiri. So, uh, yes, this is about the uh, wagon that was excavated at Sanoli. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, it is strange that the first real wagon from the Indian subcontinent uh -huh. should come from an Eastern site rather than in the heartland of the uh, Vedic texts, which is the uh, Indus Saraswati Basin. Uh -huh. So am I mistaken in my perception or uh, is there something that I'm missing? Uh, you see that, uh... Yamuna uh, and um, Ganga Dab is also uh, already mentioned in the Rigveda. Uh, both uh, Rigveda and Yamuna mentioned uh, uh, Yamuna and Ganga mentioned uh, in the Rigveda, and not only in the late hymns. And even Maruts are associated with Yamuna in the Rigveda. And Maruts are uh, um, chariot riders, and Maruts are um, travel with a uh, solar, uh, solar lady, uh, if I'm not mistaken, her name is Radasi, uh, and uh, she is very uh, warlike. Uh, she is a war lady also, and they are beautiful archers, ideal archers, uh, and their uh, chariots are decorated and they are shining. Uh, so, uh, that is no problem uh, to associate the Sonoli chariots with the post Rigvedic uh, Maruta's chariots, as, as per me. Uh, by the way, I was the first Russian scholar to make a scientific report on Sonoli chariots in Russia several years ago. And um, speaking about uh, chariots, uh, you call them wagons. They're not wagons, they're true standing chariots. I know it for sure because I have published around 4,000 ancient chariots and chariot depictions of the ancient world already. And I uh, have developed uh, uh, the, um, the detailed uh, definition of a, of a true chariot. So a true chariot can have uh, bulls as drawing animals. The true chariot can have solid wheels, not only spoked wheels. Uh, but if it has um, a system of railing or sideboards or a body um, high enough to be used as a means of keeping balance for the standing chariot, it is a true chariot. Uh, and it has an opening uh, at the back also as a true chariot. So Sonoli uh, vehicles, they are true chariots. And what is even more interesting that Sonoli chariots so far, I repeat it so far, are the most advanced chariots of the ancient world now because they have this system of uh, copper pipes used as a frame uh, it is very uh, progressive for this time it is, it, it, it is uh, just uh, uh, for example etruscans and some uh, egyptians they repeated this only centuries later and even thousand centuries later and Chinese also repeated it only centuries later. So Sonoli uh, chariot makers were very progressive. They were very advanced technologically for their time. And it is just a miracle. It is just a wonder 
to discover these kind of vehicles in the center of northern India, in the Rigvedic habitat already. Thank you, Dr. Alexander. Uh, so there is a further question by Rishma ji. She is asking, isn't there a difference between Arya and Aryan? As Arya is a way of addressing people, not an racial identity. Uh, uh, it is a very good question. <clears throat> I like your question very much because, uh, you know, when I was a student, you know, my speci uh, first spe specialization was Varna system of India. Uh, yes, and I've studied uh, Varna mentions uh, throughout from the Rig Veda and up to the early medieval uh, and even later, up to the 18th century AD. And uh, for me, and I follow the steps of my scientific teacher, uh, Shreya Rabindu, uh, Varna uh, system is a system of psychological, of a spiritual division of society. So areas are not a uh, racial type. Areas are noble people. Uh, the people who follow Dharma, Svadharma, according to their Svadhava, uh, according to their nature. It's like you have a specific uh, soul, uh, uh, specific character, specific temperament, and it makes you uh, behave so and not the other way. Uh, there are three uh, uh, Arya types of the early India, the warrior, the wise man, and uh, the producer. The warrior is Kshatriya, Rajanya, uh, the uh, wise man is Brahmin, and uh, the producer is Vaishya. So they are Aryas. Uh, all the other people are an Aryas. It, uh, mm, it is not important whether they are from Indo-European uh, origin or not. Uh, they may, may, may be of different skin color, of different anthropological type. Uh, how did all this happen? According to me, it happened uh, when the Rigvedic Rishis, um, they descended from their ashrams in the Himalayas and started to teach uh, the um, very, uh, very varied uh, anthropological and racial population on, on the plains of uh, uh, the Hindus, uh, the Saraswati, the Ganga, the Yamuna. And uh, those who followed them, they became Aryas. They were from different uh, cultures. They were from different tribes. They were of different skin color. For example, uh, Krishna, he is black skinned, yes? But he is a, an, a typical uh, Mahabharata hero and uh, the leader and uh, an ideal uh, king and wise man. And Krishna, uh, the wife of Pandavas, is also black skinned. Uh, but one of the Pandavas is Arjuna, he is fair-skinned. It doesn't matter what color of skin uh, you have. Uh, if you follow Dharma, you are Arya. If you do not follow Dharma, you are not Arya. That is uh, very simple. See, in your map, when you showed mm -hmm. the migration mm -hmm. of uh, Indo-European languages all the way up to Greece. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, the Saraswati Basin, then Iran, and then the Mitanni, and then Anatolia, and then to Greece. Okay. So I'm asking about the other side, which is uh, the eastern side. Which ah, is you Tokarian. mean Ch China and Central Asia? Yes, Tokarian. Okay, I see, I see. Uh, you see, uh, several years um, ago, about 12-15, uh, I have made a report on Tarim Basin, and I made parallels of the Tarim uh, Bronze Age culture um, of uh, South He Cemetery with the Rig Vedic because the similarities are striking. The South He Cemetery, it has a great many um, uh, po uh, sacrificial posts, burial posts, and it, it is very similar to the Rigvedic description of the cemetery in the, if I'm not mistaken, in the 10th Mandala, where there are many sacrificial posts uh, standing on the uh, burial place. And also we have in the South He Cemetery and the related cemeteries, uh, the Yoni cult and Linga cult also. And we also have the inhumation, like in the Matthew Harappa, uh, in wooden coffins. And also we have a boat uh, cult because these coffins were looking like boats. Uh, 
uh, wooden boats. And also uh, boat cult is very uh, important for the Rig Veda already. Because uh, one more uh, aspect, Rig Veda, the Rig Veda is the oceanic culture. It is a shipbuilding culture. It is a ship traveling culture. So ships are very important for the imagery of the Rig Veda, also for the sacred uh, imagery of the Rig Veda. So there are some parallels with the terrain culture. And also, um, I have published an English article on the uh, horned non horses or the Indo Europeans. Uh, there you can see the spread of the uh, horned uh, non horses uh, cult uh, from this uh, region uh, of the uh, boundary region of uh, Bactria, Margiana, Iran, Afghanistan, and uh, Hindustan uh, to, up to uh, Scandinavia. Because if you look at Scandinavian gods, they are riding on uh, animals uh, looking like horses, but having horns. Uh, where does it come from? According to me, the earliest uh, stage of chariot development in the ancient world uh, was when uh, these ancient people, uh, they used uh, different animals to draw their firstly invented chariots. Uh, they were bulls, they were different liquids, not only uh, True horses. They were even deer because uh, in the Transcaucasia there were some uh, deer recorded archaeologically as uh, drawing animals of the chariots. And uh, there are many uh, chariot deers in different mythologies, uh, goats also, big goats. And uh, then uh, around uh, 2000 uh, BC, uh, the horses uh, were introduced as, as the main. Uh, chariot drawing animals but these uh, bulls and other animals uh, they uh, moved on to the mythology uh, and they stayed there in the in the european mythology of uh, celtic tribes uh, we have these haunt uh, deer chariot animals uh, haunt uh, animals uh, chariot animals in Scandinavian Germanic mythology. So it uh, means that uh, there were um, some Central Asian or you know, South Asian or maybe Iranian um, homeland of the Indo-Europeans. And by the way, uh, there are uh, linguistic books, uh, linguistic works, uh, tracing parallels of the Indo-European languages and uh, Chinese language also. Uh, it is a very profound, a very deep question. So again, I repeat that I am the only one person <laughs> that can't, uh, who can't uh, embrace everything in my life. I do what I can. So, very good. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm just a person with a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, because uh, the field has intrigued me for a long time. Anyway, so uh, the Aryan question refuses to go away. So I want to know what you think of uh, Srikant Telegri's identification of the uh, uh, identification of the Aryas of the Rig Veda as the Purus and specifically the Bharata subtribe of the Purus. Do you think that identification is correct and uh, you know the literary evidence backs it up at least in the uh, earliest layers you see um, the problem is uh, there are two historic interpretations of the Rig Veda. the first uh, takes uh, Rig, uh, the Rig Vedic uh, information literally as it is and uh, states that it is historic for example this famous dasharajni battle yes uh, they think that it is a real battle that happened uh, somewhere, that Sudas was a real king uh, of Arias and so on. Uh, I don't believe it at all, because they uh, do not understand that Rig Veda is a symbolic uh, document, a symbolic uh, text. It was uh, composed, it was uh, written, not written, it was composed, uh, it was uh, done by the yogis. They were sacred. Uh, they were uh, they were sages, and they were just using symbols of uh, the surrounding life uh, taken from nature phenomena, uh, historic uh, phenomena, society phenomena, community phenomena, religious. Uh, but they uh, used them in their secret language. There is the secret language of the Rig Veda. Those who don't understand it, they are not scientists. 
because uh, the uh, problem of the secret uh, language of Rig Veda, the symbolic teaching of Rig Veda is very old. It, it has also started uh, around the middle of the 19th century. And now uh, no serious scholar um, will uh, agree with the fact that uh, the Rig Veda should be understood literally. And when uh, someone uh, uh, states that uh, the Rig Veda was a product of only one tribe, of only Purus, of, of Bharatas, uh, I think it is not correct. It is not correct because the Rig Veda is uh, too geographically diverse and wide to be the product of only one uh, tribe. Uh, there were different uh, rishis families, uh, the authors of the Rig Veda, there were hundreds of them. So uh, how could they all be from one tribe? It is not possible. So I can't agree with this question, with this statement. Mm 